We've talked about eight to nine months of preparation in order to plan this exercise, actually planning who's going to be involved, what the scenario is, the development of all the exercise materials and then of course conducting the exercise which was four hours of intensive teams playing all the different roles. Um, obviously we're going to be looking at gaps in any training that they're doing. We're not testing people, we're testing processes and procedures. You know, obviously when we do the feedback and we assess all the evaluation forms, we're going to be able to identify where we've got some issues that we need to address. The purpose of a major disaster like that is to be able to test all the uh, emergency response teams. Uh, that's going to be the first responders that do search and rescue, the amateur radio, the uh, use of uh, drones or uh, unmanned vehicles, the emergency shelter and accommodation team, then different elements of the emergency operations center, the incident command, and then the relationship of how we work with uh, Burnaby Fire Department, Burnaby RCMP, and St. John's Ambulance. Uh, two main control f uh, functions of that is the emergency operations center and the incident command center. And this will give the opportunity for the emergency response teams to uh, practice. They'll conduct search and rescue of injured casualties in the buildings, the care of domestic pets, and the uh, UAVs are first for us at BCIT. And this is going to provide a, a lot more opportunity to be able to respond to the community. What I'll be doing is uh, coaching and evaluating in the Incident Command Center that you see here and uh, assisting the Incident Commander and his team to make tactical decisions and react to the exercise injects that are coming into the ICC. Today we are activating our emergency response teams in response to a, a report of a boiler explosion out of our SE8 building. So the response today is our emergency operations center will activate as will our incident command. We'll have our emergency response teams as well as the Burnaby Fire Department respond to that site, provide initial light urban search and rescue through the buildings that are impacted, our SW3, SE8 and SE12 buildings. So my role as the director of the emergency operations center is to ensure that uh, our four key areas are planning, logistics, operations and finance groups within the emergency operations center communicate well function appropriately and make the the necessary decisions to provide site level support to our responders we deal with all the immediate messaging to the community and and beyond as well as liaise between the policy group at bcit uh, and the Emergency Operations Center. Uh, we were really fortunate in this, in this exercise that the Burnaby Fire Department, who would be the, the primary responder to uh, a boiler explosion, could be on site and could work with us in creating realism. We also had St. John Ambulance and the uh, Burnaby RCMP on site, which again brings us uh, a level of realism as well as um, allows us to ask some of those really important questions on how the multiple agency response would work. Unmanned aircraft systems, or drones as people most normally hear them as, are basically remote controlled uh, pilotless aircraft and we're carrying a HD camera system underneath today for inspection. Well this is our first year of using a UAS or unmanned aircraft systems in Disaster Day. So what we're doing is giving a new vantage point to uh, first responders. We're able to get um, aerial shots of uh, potentially dangerous situations, high resolution video and photography. So we're able to get details of damage or destruction that's been caused by the event. And we can relay that back in real time back to central command and first responders. The advantage of having unmanned aircraft systems is we can deploy it literally within minutes, be up in the air and have a live video feed that we can pass off to first responders and give them their own monitor for uh, instant response or instant uh, viewing of the situation. You arm it, get your video downlink ready, and you're in the air, which literally within five minutes, which is one of the advantages to UAVs. One of the other reasons we are capturing footage today is, for example, for insurance purposes. Though we're capturing the disaster itself, a lot of times uh, later down the road, insurance companies will want to analyze the, uh, the scene. I'm so proud of you. You know, it's not only the fact that we're going through this on a semi-annual basis, but as well the partnerships we have with fire, police, RCMP, ambulance. It's just great. And uh, the other post-secondaries that are here. 
Um, I'm sure in the debrief today you'll learn lots and we'll, we'll improve. We've been on the edge of issues and, and a great team here that has taken care of it, but it can always happen and we can't be prepared enough.